Hello and welcome to another episode of Laptop Retrospective, and today I'm pretty excited to feature this keyboard here because it is just different. So this is a Skylong GK61 Pro, and this is built off of the GH60 standard. So for those of you that are really into customizing keyboards and you're looking at this and already thinking about parts and how to really trick it up, it does have some universal background that you'll be able to lean into there. Before I continue, I want to point out that Skylong did send me this sample for the purpose of the review. I did not personally purchase this. However, my reviews do remain my own and independent. One of the key things you'll note is that this does not have a traditional function row. So this is very much a typist keyboard or one with a very specific niche in mind. Obviously, one of the most unique things about this is staring us right in the face, which is a split space bar and this knob in the middle. And we'll talk more about that in a second. I've actually really wanted to try a split space bar for a long time, so I'm pretty stoked about this. You can get it in three different colors. You can get a kind of a blue pink color. You can get a white gray. Both of those are in an ABS plastic shell. And then you can get this, which is a titanium gray with these yellow or orange accents. And I don't know, this is a bit more retro feeling to me. It's, it's scratching some kind of old school itch and it's in a block of anodized aluminum. So it's got some heft. The keys are north facing RGB backlit, which is excellent. And it comes in either a wired version or a wireless version. This is the wireless version, which means it has Bluetooth and 2.4 gigahertz connection and a 4,000 milliamp battery. It is worth pointing out for you enthusiasts that if you want QMK or VIA, you wanna go with the wired version, which you can also get for a little less. This one, you need to use the uh, proprietary Skylong software to program. I find it very good. I, I don't think that that's enough to chase me away. Both of them are very easy to program. It's just, if you want the QMK VIA environment, you're gonna to have to go with the wired version. All of these are hot swappable switches. They're running Gatorons, either yellow, browns, or reds. This one is running yellow switches because I wanted to try them. Bit of a heavier linear press than a red. You do have an O-ring gasket uh, design for the entire keyboard, so it feels excellent. And even the knob here is hot swappable and fully programmable. The keycaps themselves are double shot BBT keycaps, so very uh, wear resistant feel really good under the fingertips. A little bit of texture there goes a long way. You also get some additional keycaps in the box. So if you want to swap this out to a standard space bar, you can, or change the color or look of the enter and escape keys. So there's all sorts of neat things that you can do with this programmable knob that I'm actually really excited to try out. Studies have shown with people that use keyboards quite frequently that when it comes to your thumb and which one strikes the space bar, it's more often than not the same thumb over and over which means one whole side of the space bar goes underused. I'm really curious to know how true that is because what people often do in these environments is that they will program this to something like the backspace key. So that way they don't have to break the F row to reach up for the backspace key. It's literally there under their fingertips. And something that's pretty slick that was pointed out to me by the manufacturer is that this knob right here can be used to move the cursor forward and back and also hit the enter key. So if you think about that, you have space, shift, enter, forward, back, backspace, and all your main keys well within reach without having to break a typist uh, posture. You can also program this uh, for macros like uh, control plus and control minus to zoom on a photo editing program or maybe scrub a timeline on a video editor. It is worth pointing out that even though you don't have a function row, you can use the function key right here and hit the numbers to get your F1 to F12. So you're not completely out of the loop if you do need them, it's just another keyboard shortcut away. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and quickly program this. And then we're actually going to do a typing test using the forward and backspace keys uh, set up the way that they suggest. One thing I should point out before uh, I get too carried away is that the sounds of these keys uh, is especially good. That space bar is unlike anything I've ever felt.
All right, let's get this typing test underway. All right, so that first test was perfect accuracy, 62 words a minute, which is somewhat slow. And I'll be honest, that's probably because I was constantly reminding myself hitting the backspace and uh, key traditionally out of force of habit rather than keeping my hands here. So I'm going to do it again and see if I can't uh, behave myself and actually uh, keep it, keep my hands where I want to keep them for the purposes of the test. That one was 42 words a minute, not using the backspace. Again, a little slower, but I can easily see myself training up. So I'm going to do one more. Okay, back up to 61. Honestly, I think I could see myself getting used to this. It's always a bit odd doing a typing test with a keyboard that you're not familiar with because you are putting in an artificial stressor. But overall, I found it to be a rather pleasant experience. Like the key stroke felt great. Key travel was good. It's just a little bit of learning that's going to be required on my part. So overall, ladies and gentlemen, I actually rather enjoy this keyboard. It's got a great heft to it. The software is exceptionally powerful, more powerful than anything that I would ever need, quite frankly. And the idea of a split space bar is something that I think I can warm up to pretty easy. And you know what? If I can't, I can always go back to using that uh, right backspace in conjunction with this when I remember to use it, especially when I'm doing like fine editing within text doing a typing test with it. It was definitely uh, showing some training scars, if you will, uh, for relying on this key and never having to use this before. 
but even then I was able to get a very decent typing rate for myself personally within the 60s with a keyboard I've never used before. And that is usually a very good sign. It's when my <laughs> typing speed drops below 40 or 50 that I really start to think, okay, this is getting in the way. I hope you enjoyed looking at this. If you did, I will leave some videos up here that you might also enjoy. And if you are looking to support the channel, I'll give you some suggestions over here. Really like to know what you think about the split spacebar. Make sure you're leaving those comments down below, and I will see you next time.